gonna keep it real with you guys. I've been watching baseball for quite some time. I have never seen a superstar player call out their team quite like Corbin Burns did yesterday after he lost his arbitration case. We're gonna play it in just a second because again, I've never seen it before. He went at them. We also have an update on Steven Strasburg. He suffered yet another injury setback. Cole Hamels, the 2008 World Series MVP. He's back in baseball. He just signed with one team. I'm sure you can guess who it is considering they're signing everyone. And then also an update on the Oakland Athletics. They might not be the Oakland A's in 2025. But I'm not going to waste any more time. Here is Corbin Burns on his arbitration case with the Brewers. I had the hearing all day Tuesday. It's been Valentine's Day on a plane. Got home at you know 10, 11 o'clock and, and got to see my wife before she fell asleep. So that was kind of how the Valentine's Day went. So that was that was fun. But um, yeah, like I say, you, you kind of find out your true value. You think you, you, you work hard for seven years in the organization and five years with the, with the big league team. And um, you get in there and basically they, they value you much different than what you thought you'd, you contributed to the organization. Um, and it's just, you know, it's obviously it's tough to hear, it's tough to take, but, you know, they're trying to do what they can to win a hearing. Um, but I think there was obviously other ways that they, they could have gone about it and um, probably been a little more respectful with the, with the way they went about it. But, um, you know, it, at the end of the day, here we are. Uh, they obviously, they won it, uh, but it, it, when it came down to, to winning or losing the hearing, it was, it was more than that for me. Corbin, this is everyone's fear for a player, especially a star player going to a hearing that it creates just some maybe not bad blood, but just some hard feelings that weren't there before. Um, how, how do you guys repair that? Yeah, I mean, there's there, there's no denying that the relationship is definitely definitely hurt from, um, you know, what what perspired over the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, there's there, there's really no way getting around that. Um, obviously, we're, we're, we're professionals and we're going to go out there and, and do our job and, you know, and Keep doing what I can every five, every fifth day that I go out there, but um, you know when some of the things that are said that you know, for instance, basically basically put me in the forefront of, of the reason why we didn't make the postseason last year. I mean, that's something that probably doesn't need to be said. You know, we can go go about a hearing without having to do that. So that's kind of one of those things that you know, obviously you know they, there was no attacking of, of character, of, you know, person of who I was, but um, just the just the some of the stuff that was said that you know definitely didn't need to be um, said is, is, is something that you know, I think kind of disappointed everyone. Now, this is not the first time I've seen a player and a team upset with each other because of arbitration. If you're new to baseball, you don't know what arbitration is. Arbitration is when the player says, I'm worth this. The team says, no, you're not. You're worth this. And then a third party arbiter comes in and they settle it. So in Chris Bryant's case, he lost. In Corbin Burns' case, he lost. But the thing is, I don't remember the Cubs telling Chris Bryant to his face that Chris Bryant was the reason why they didn't make the playoffs. And essentially what the Brewers were inferring is that because Corbin Burns had a near four ERA in the second half, that's the reason why Milwaukee missed the playoffs. He wasn't the same guy as he was in the first half when he had a 2.14 ERA. Do they have a point? I mean, he wasn't as good, but Corbin Burns is one of the best pitchers in baseball. You can make an argument that the only reason why they were in a position to even make the playoffs after that horrible horrible trade with Josh Hader it was Corbin Burns. Even though he had a 3.97 ERA, he was still one of the best and most productive pitchers in baseball. The dude had a 2.94 ERA and 243 strikeouts, which led baseball last year. And this was after he won Cy Young in 2021. So to put the blame on Corbin Burns, especially on Valentine's Day when he could be at home with his wife, yeah, that's just not gonna go over well at all. Corbin Burns, he's 28 years old, entering his prime. If I was a third party arbiter, I would have sided with Corbin Burns, but then again, I am pro player. and also so if you did not know, Major League Baseball gets to choose that arbiter. So of course, they're going to choose the MLB teams almost every single time. I can't remember the last time an MLB player won arbitration. So if your mind was absolutely blown, join the club because I cannot believe that the Brewers thought that they could get away with this. I'm happy that Corbin Burns is speaking out and I hope that more players across baseball do this more often because there are some slimy owners, some slimy front offices. They get away with so much. Not today. Not on Corbin Burns' watch. He went full Kang the Conqueror on them. Well, I'm not going to spoil the movie, but he, he went Kang. So again, we're going to talk about Cole Hamels. We're going to talk about the fact that Oakland is probably moving to Las Vegas. But before we move on, please let me know your thoughts on this situation because Corbin Burns, he did not hold back and rightfully so. He should be upset. This is some of the most depressing news I have seen in quite some time. I was excited for Steven Strasburg to come back healthy in 2023. The guy has only thrown a combined 31 innings since 2021. And even when he was pitching, he had a seven ERA and only striking out eight hitters per nine while walking five so he was all over the place he was terrible he's been injured this is one of the worst contracts in baseball history and if you're a nationals fan yeah it just 
It keeps on getting worse. Wait, hold on. What? Manny Machado planning an exercise opt-out? We'll have to talk about that in tomorrow's video because apparently Manny Machado is thinking about leaving the Padres. But speaking of the Padres, they have added yet another piece to their potential championship puzzle. They have added the 2008 World Series MVP Cole Hamels. He's a four-time All-Star. He's been top 10 in Cy Young one, two, three, four separate times. I think his best season was back in 2014 when he had a 2.46 ERA and a near nine strikeouts per nine. He was really good. For his career, Cole Hamels has a 59 B war and a combined 3.43 ERA. He has been very productive and honestly very good over the course of his career. Is he going to be a Hall of Famer? No, probably not. He's at 163 wins, but he just turned 39 years old, so maybe there's some gas left in the tank considering he has not pitched since 2020, so maybe his arm is feeling lively. In 2019 with the Cubs, he had a 3.8 ERA with a 9.1 strikeouts per nine, and for Cole Hamels standard, that's actually pretty impressive in terms of just striking people out because his career strikeouts per nine is 8.5. So again, maybe as baseball progresses in terms of technology and understanding spin rate and being able to have a consistent delivery, maybe Cole Hamels can come back and shock the world like Johnny Cueto did for the White Sox last year. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the fact that Robert Manfred has come out and said that Las Vegas right now is the prime location for an A's relocation. So apparently infrastructure issues with Oakland are still to be determined. Uh, this is from John Fisher, the owner of the A's. And I really feel like all of the moves that the A's have made over the last few months and years, it's just an indication that they are moving. They have completely dismantled and not just dismantled, they have decimated their entire roster on a major league level to rebuild a double A and triple A super squad. And even then they haven't gotten the biggest pieces. In my opinion, I feel like the biggest piece so far has been Daryl Hernandez when they got him from the Orioles. But aside from that, Christian Pache, he's kind of been a bust. They do have Shea Langoliers and some other young pieces like Seth Brown, who is very underrated. But in my opinion, they've done all of this kicking dirt in the faces of the A's fan base because they're no longer interested in staying in Oakland. They want to move to Las Vegas. And let me tell you guys, the Golden Knights and the Las Vegas Raiders, they sell out almost every game because not only do you have locals in attendance, but drunk tourists, it's going to happen. Tourists are more willing to spend that extra buck to go out and have fun. So the payroll, it might increase fans they would be in attendance I don't see a negative to the A's coming to Las Vegas aside from the fact that it's coming at the expense of another fan base that really sucks I don't want Oakland to lose their baseball team so I can get one would it be really fun to get season tickets so I can go and do vlogs with you guys absolutely Shohei Otani Mike Trout coming in I can go and vlog that because it's down the street that would be fantastic but I would rather MLB expand and create a new team for Las Vegas or Nashville as opposed to stealing one from someone else and last but not least a few days ago Brian Cashman kind of threw Yankees fans under the bus by saying they should be grateful. The Yankees were four games away from the World Series. Garrett Cole, he was essentially asked the same question. What do they think of what happened in 2022? And here's his response. Garrett, you said yourself that you had a good season last year, or a great season. I apologize if I'm misquoting you. Then did it hurt more the way it ended? Well, I mean, we got waxed. So, you know, anytime you get waxed, it doesn't feel good whether you're going to the salon or you're on the baseball field. So <laughs> that does it for today's recap. Let me know your thoughts on everything that we talked about. If you enjoyed or learned something new, leave a like and subscribe. And if you're bored, there's a video right next to my face that YouTube wants you to watch. So yeah, give it a look.